All right, we like to look at the bigger picture here on Intentional Talk, the broader strokes. And given that we have our own long distance runner on the show, we want to look at situations in the long run. So first up, Juan Soto is having a hard time adjusting to the pitch timer. Ryan, you get the honors as the only marathon runner on this show to weigh in first. He said he doesn't like the pitch clock at all, going on to say that you can't play mind games anymore. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I mean, that was part of his his shtick, right? His at bat was trying to mess with the pitcher, mess with timing, the stuff he did in the batter's box. And, you know, there, I mean, listen, it's early in the season, but there was the struggles when he got over to Cincinnati, or Cincinnati to San Diego last year. Um, and then, you know, it's been a struggle so far this year. The thing that concerns me or I, I worry is when we start messing with our brain, right? Like that's the part they say 90% of this game is 50% mental or something like that. I don't know, Yogi Berra said it. But when you start second guessing things of how you're gonna have to have at bats, when the reality is, is you're just competing against the guy in the box. Listen, he has to pitch the ball in a certain amount of time and you have to hit it in that certain amount of time. So whatever it is, it is. And you gotta just figure it out because you know, you're hitting under 200. I know you're one of the premier hitters in this game, but like you gotta, you gotta just move past it and go out there and compete because um, your bat to ball skills, your knowledge of the strike zone are as good as anybody in the league. And so just go out there and worry about that. It concerns me just a little bit, you know? Yeah, Kev, uh, Soto is hitting 164 so far in 18 games. Does this concern you in the long run? This is all part of a struggle bunny, okay? He hit those in his last 16 at bats. Tremendous player, tremendous guy. He'll figure this out. But during these struggles, yeah, so there's always just something that we're going to lean on, right? And this is new. This is going to take some time for some. Uh, you know, I was a mental guy at the plate, too. You know, I was a, a guess hitter and thinking and, and doing stuff. But at some point, it, it, it's plenty of time. It's just new. So, yeah, there's a little more. Uh, we got to be ready and looking up, and it's going to take, like I said, you know, in, in another couple months when he's hitting 385 and he's got 10 home runs in the month of May, uh, it won't be that big of a deal. But it's definitely been a little rough start, and offensively, this team's had a rough start, so I think the expectations are coming in so high, we're just going to break. We have such great players, and we spent a lot of money, but it takes a little time chemistry-wise to kind of everybody do their role. All right, Kev, Cody Bellinger looking right at home with the Cubs, a 464 average in his last seven games with five hits on Monday. In the long run, is this what we should expect from him? Yeah, listen, he won the MVP in 2019. Okay, tremendous player. Then, like, went through, whether it was a little bit of the shoulder injury or whatever it was, but just it, the game's hard. He lost it for a second, right? So then we use this, this statement, change of scenery is good sometimes and yes it's good for Cody Bellinger and yes Chicago Cubs and Wrigley Field it's going to be remarkable this is the kind of player he's a talent he's a guy that can play a lot of positions and he's probably the best guy at all the positions and when you put him out he plays first base center field right field left field he probably can catch he probably can play shortstop if you had to my point being is that I, I, I like Cody Bellinger as a player. I know the struggle bunnies are there, and that's part of the adjustment period in the big leagues. You have to make adjustments. Whatever adjustment he's made, whether it's mentally or physically, things are looking up. Yeah, and I think, too, like what you're talking about there, the mental aspect of that. As you know, Kev, like when, you, when I was struggling, like you're going through tough times as a pitcher, all you want mm -hmm. is some success to start building off of. And like so now he comes to a new team. If he starts out in April and he's hitting, you know, a buck 80 or he's – now that just stays in there again. All the questions are, are you, you know, what's going on? What's wrong with Cody Bellinger? And instead, he, A, he's healthy. And then B, he's he's produced. Early on in the season, the yeah, average wasn't quite that high, but he was driving in some runs. Then he started to hit the ball in the ballpark. And then all of a sudden, a five for five. Night. These are the kind of things that start to, in your mind, remind you of the type of ball player you, you are. Not, not that you were that you are, but you get stuck because of injury, because of failure. You get kind of get in this rut. And right now, this is the, probably the best thing that could have happened to Cody Bellinger was getting off to a hot start. It silenced some critics. And then also, too, it just allows him to go, yeah, this is who I am. Now I'm healthy. Now I'm back out here to doing this. I got a new scene here in Chicago. Um, they're having a lot of fun. They're scoring a bunch of runs. And good for him to get off to this hot start. He put a ton of work in in spring training. I saw him down in Arizona. He was so excited to be healthy, to be, um, you know, to be wanted in Chicago. And for him to get off to this kind of start is tremendous. And I think he's going to have a really good year.
Talking about guys who are off to a good start in their new digs, the Twins and Pablo Lopez are nearing an extension, according to Athletic. The Athletic's Dan Hayes, also my friend. Lopez is entering his sixth season, first with the Twins, a reported four years, $73.5 million. Kevin, what are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, I love this. I love this for both sides. Uh, I love when trades look like this from both sides. Lopez is doing a great job. You know, he's throwing a ton of strikes, striking out a lot of guys, and, and, and walks are down. And last year, he had a career year with the Marlins at 10 wins, 180 inch pitch. So this is starting pitching is awesome. When you can find a guy in a little bit of a diamond in the rough, let's go. And the Twins did a good job, and now you lock them up. Yeah, and I think, you know, making that trade, giving up a batting champion and Luis Arias that goes down there, um, and you're getting. Pablo Lopez back and right away you sign him to an extension and it's not a super long term it's four years it's average values less than 20 million dollars a year it fits Minnesota um, this is just it's great for the player he gets all that guarantee money and it's great for the team because you've secured him in the rotation for the next four years.